Your self-worth is not your financial health. So you are worth more than what's in your bank account. And I think just realizing that is huge. We want to empower you to make fully informed choices about your pregnancy and parenting options. Let's talk about what's next now that pregnancy has entered the chat. Welcome back to Pregnancy Has Entered the Chat. Today we have Christy Smith on the podcast. Christy is an, the interim president and CEO of Acclaim Federal Credit Union, and she has volunteered with us as a peer advocate and teacher for our classes. Christy, welcome to the podcast. Oh, thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. Awesome. We're so excited to have you. And today we are discussing healthy financial habits. So we all have financial habits, whether we're aware of them or not. And when a new baby comes into the picture, financial habits get even more important. Today, we're going to learn from Christy on how we can shift our mindset and build healthy financial habits. So is there anything you want to say to our listeners before we get started? I just want to say it's just, um, I think the biggest thing with financial habits is just doing something. Mm -hmm. So just starting somewhere, you didn't, you don't have to make it really complex, Mm -hmm. but just making that first step to start. I think that that's huge. And I think that is, um, probably the best advice I'll give today is just start somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Just putting like something so small into place can be huge in life. Absolutely. Awesome. So what is the biggest challenge that women are facing in their financial lives? Honestly, I think the biggest challenge is just education. Mm -hmm. So um, I believe that the education system have failed not just women, but individuals um, as a whole, because we were not taught these things in elementary school, which spilled over to high school and then spilled over to college. And so now we have young adults or adults, and we expect them to know, all these financial tips and how to budget and how to read a credit report, but yet we've never taught them. So I think that education is first and foremost, and I think that um, it's empowering. And I think that's probably the biggest challenge is, you know, the lack of education. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you and I had talked about that, that Mm -hmm. knowledge is power. Absolutely. And just getting the information into the hands of Everyone, like you said, women and everyone else that Mm -hmm. was not taught any of these financial habits. So I think that's huge. And part of the reason I'm so excited to have you on today so that we can talk a little bit about those small things that Mm -hmm. people just don't know. Absolutely. So a lot of the time, I think we don't know where to start, like kind of tying into that education Mm -hmm. piece. So what are some of those small steps that we can take to begin building financial habits? So I think that the biggest thing is just writing down your income and expenses and then looking at that. And then my next step would be setting goals. And that's going to be unique for each and every individual. So my goal setting may be to pay off debt, where your goal setting may be to save money for a car or a house. So everyone's goals are going to be unique to their situation. And your goals will change Mm -hmm. as you go through stages of life. So goal setting would be important. And then the next is just tracking it and looking at your budget. Mm -hmm. So is it working? If it's not working, then making, you know, tweaking it to make adjustments to make it work for you. If you make anything too complex, you will not finish it. So again, I'm going to go back to really simple steps of, you know, just make it simple and it's something that you can follow and then you will more than likely um, succeed with it. Yeah. And like you said, those, whether it's a notebook or an yeah. app, there's so many kind of simple ways that you can budget nowadays yeah. that does a lot of the work for you. Exactly. Uh, which is so wonderful. I just downloaded a budgeting app mm-hmm. and it's awesome to have, you know, those categories yeah. listed out and it is unique to the individual. Mm-hmm. So it's cool. We'll get to talk about like when new moms are expecting, yeah. you know, those goals that they'll have. So I'm excited to keep, keep on going. And this part I feel like is really important. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we talk about money like it is just dollars and cents. It doesn't really have any personal meaning to us, but we know that's not true. It's personal and it's emotional. So how can we shift our mindset around our finances? I think the biggest thing for me is just for the separation. So your self-worth is not your financial health. Yes. So you are worth more than what's in your bank account. Mm -hmm. And I think just realizing that is huge. But I also want to make space 
for fear, Mm -hmm. stress, and anxiety because those things are real. And they are usually wrapped around money. Mm -hmm. And so if you can't make the ends meet or you're worried about that new bill or, or something coming up, that's big. And so if we don't acknowledge those feelings, then, you know, it makes people even more fearful or more stressed because we're not even saying that that that's valid reasons to be stressed. So I think we have to make space for that. Then I'm going to go back to the education because the more you educate yourself around a subject, you feel more empowered Mm -hmm. and you feel more confident about that. So the more education that we give, the more, you know, we sit down with someone with, you know, someone at your credit union or your, you know, community bank, Mm -hmm. and you're going to feel better about those situations, which will hopefully alleviate a lot of that hopeless stress, anxiety that comes around money. Yeah, that is such good advice. Just, you know, separating your self-worth from what's in your bank account, I think is something that a lot of us struggle to do Mm -hmm. for whatever reason. You know, maybe it's, you know, we had this goal or image of ourselves or our parents or whoever it is that we would like to be like or would like to not be like. And um that just I usually try to tell our members that your self-worth is not your net worth. Mm-hmm. So Yes, that is so <laughs> you good. You are worth more than what's in your bank account. Yes, that yes. is so good. And I hope that that sinks into the hearts of mm-hmm. people listening. But then also, like you said, creating that space for people who are struggling, you yes. know, and that it's a real thing. It it's is. a real weight to be carrying. And so getting that knowledge and mm-hmm. those resources, talking to someone yes. at your local credit union or bank can be life-changing. It can. Absolutely. So when women come to see us, they're often in a difficult set of circumstances. What is the best way to create a budget when you just already know that your expenses are more than your income or you just feel like money's really tight? Mm-hmm. How do you recommend go about going about doing that? I think for me, um, the best advice I could give is to, again, look at those expenses. Mm -hmm. You know, what are you spending money on? Mm -hmm. Um, Maybe you can look at thrift. Mm -hmm. Thrift stores are fantastic. I actually love thrift stores. Um, You know, and and just seeing, you know, are you getting brand name versus, you know, something that costs a little bit less? Or um, looking at your resources in the community. I mean, like the Pregnancy Network. You know, you guys are a tremendous resource to moms, and um, it's fantastic. But there are other nonprofits and community resources in the area that can actually help um, assist in those areas. So, again, making sure that you understand what's out there for you to, um, you know, to be able to, you know, possibly take a part of or, you know, get assistance from is huge. But I think sometimes if we can just tweak a little bit, um, you know, maybe you need to look at your deductible on your insurance policy. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe you can save um, in that manner or, you know, just looking at each individual bill or each individual payment that you have mm-hmm. and saying, how can I reduce this? Or if not, let's move on to the next thing. But just going down the list of where can I reduce or sometimes it's getting that second job yeah. and increasing the income because really I don't want to make a budget seem like it's simple, but it's either you're going to reduce your expenses or increase your income. Mm -hmm. And one of the two things are going to happen in order for you to meet those goals. And so I think, you know, that's big to recognize that. Yeah. And that, you know, like you said, it sounds simple, but it can be difficult. Mm -hmm. And so is there one of those that you would recommend first, like First, review your expenses and par those down as much as you can. And then if you still need extra income, increase your income if at all possible. Or do you do you think it's easier to maybe reduce those expenses or to increase your income? I think it is absolutely easier to reduce expenses. Yes. And I know that because I've, I've been in this industry for 22 years mm-hmm. and I've sat down with multiple, multiple um, members. And sometimes, again, like I said, I don't even know sometimes what I spend money on until yeah. I put it on paper. Yeah. And when you put it on paper, a lot of times um, our members are like, there's no way that yeah. I spend that much <laughs> eating out. And I'm like, well, it is. Yeah. And they're, well, you know, just let me cook at home for two nights a week and I can save this much money. So I think 
taking a deep dive into expenses is the best way. And then when you've cut everything you can cut, then you look at maybe an additional, um, you know, job or, mm-hmm. you know, maybe some work, work from home or, you yeah. know, doing something on the side that maybe to increase your income. So yeah, definitely expenses first. Yes, it is. It can be so shocking how much mm-hmm. we spend in certain categories when you do sit down to look at it. Absolutely. So that is super helpful. And then how long does it take to track expenses? Because expenses can vary from month to month. Is there a certain amount of time that you recommend taking a look at those expenses for to create an accurate budget that you could really stick to? I only say 30 days. Okay. However, I want (laughs) to, there's always a however. Yes. Um, If you pay insurance quarterly, Mm -hmm. Or if you pay your insurance yearly, Mm -hmm. you need to take that and divide it. So if it's yearly, you need to divide it by 12. Mm -hmm. You need to make sure you're capturing all of your expenses in that 30-day period. So 30 days is the recommendation. However, Mm -hmm. you want to make sure that you're factoring in everything in that 30-day period. And again, once you've tracked it for 30 days and you've done, you're always going to you're always tweaking your budget yeah. and you analyze that and you do a deep dive, then maybe at that point, that's when you start making adjustments, mm-hmm. you know, to different things. But a 30 day capture is really going to give you um, what you want to see. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I know that you work for a credit union mm-hmm. and that you feel passionate about the way that credit unions are run mm-hmm. and how you explained to me, it's run a little bit like a nonprofit. Mm-hmm. So what are the benefits of banking with a credit union versus a traditional community bank? Oh, that's my favorite question. <laughs> <laughs> I've been in the credit union movement for 22 years and we call it a movement because mm-hmm. we are constantly evolving. And what we do is we try to evolve into um, offering products and services um, for all. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's we want to provide financial services for all. And so that's why I'm very passionate about it. Yeah. Um, very inclusive and um but we are a non for profit. Mm-hmm. And so we have um, volunteer board of directors, um, kind of like here at the Pregnancy yes. Network. And uh, when you join a credit union, you're a member. Okay. And so you're an owner of that credit union. You have voting rights. Mm-hmm. At a claim federal credit union, as soon as you walk in the door, you're going to see this phrase above our, um, our member service line that says, act like you own the place you do. Oh. And so they do. They're yeah. our owners. So when we make decisions, we make decisions to please our owners, which is our members. And so every decision we make, we always ask, how does this affect the member? Does it affect them positively? Does it affect them negatively? And so when we only have to answer to members, it makes it a whole lot easier to make those decisions. At a bank, you're not able to, you don't have voting rights. Mm -hmm. Um, They have stakeholders or stockholders. And so again, they're trying to make their owners happy. Mm -hmm. And so it's a little bit different dynamic. Yes. So just knowing that you're a member and you have voting rights and you almost you you are an owner of the credit union. Um it, it makes it very um it's like family. And so and we really I'm not saying that banks are are banks don't care or, yeah, or local yeah. um community banks because I know very you know fantastic people that work in those industries. Mm-hmm. However, it is a very special place. Um I love credit unions and I advocate for credit unions a lot. And so that is wonderful. And that's something that we talk about a lot here building your community Mm -hmm. of support and having someone in your corner. And it really sounds like, you know, at a credit union that you, you get that, like you are, you know, act like you in the place you are, you do. Um, That is really cool because you know that those people have your best interest at heart when you are the sole person that they're trying to please. And we have a community project every year. Mm -hmm. And so this year it's been fighting um, through food insecurity. And we've um, donated our time and our efforts to try to tackle that, um, you know, that issue. And so every year we'll have a different community project because we really try to give back to the community. Mm -hmm. And that's something that's in our DNA and something that's very important to acclaim. Yeah, that is wonderful. And those those benefits, I love that they spread not just to the members, but then also the larger yes. community. That is just mm-hmm. so cool to hear and really shows kind of the heart of your organization mm-hmm. and then also other credit unions yes. and that, that that movement is there yeah, and is. wants to be a resource for people of all kinds mm-hmm. to right. get um, their financial health a little bit more, you know, mm-hmm. take some more ownership yep, of it. Absolutely. And then 
how can women save for their future and their children's futures? You talked a little bit about, you know, your goals are going to change over time. And maybe, you know, when you're pregnant, your goal is really just let me get the things I need for this baby when she arrives or when he arrives. Um, But over time, what would you recommend? How do you think that works in terms of adjusting that budget over time to save for your and your children's futures? Um, To address the adjusting the budget piece, um, you know, I just want to make sure that women are empowered with the information of their um, maternity rights. So, you know, what does that look like at your employer? Do you know how much you're going to get paid during that maternity leave and making sure that you're factoring that into the budget? Because, you know, that's a big thing. Um, Funny, fun fact about women is we actually have longer life expectancies than men. And a lot of times what we don't do is we underprepare for what that's going to look like. So we don't save enough money for ourselves, which creates a lot of financial instability later in life. Yeah. So just recognizing the fact that we do need to save not just for our kids, but we need to save for ourselves too. Yeah. Um, another thing that I would say is just put a little bit back every time you get paid. And I know um, members that put $5, $5 in an account every time they get paid and they just don't touch it. Yeah. And they just act like it's not there. So whatever you can afford to do, put back that and just don't touch it. Just let that be something that you're saving for you or for your child. And then again, just knowing what your resources are. Um, You know, what does your insurance look like? What are deductibles? Mm -hmm. Do you need to look for other um, insurance, you know, like WIC, or yeah. do you need Medicaid, or you know, just knowing what the resources in the community are, yeah. and being able to take advantage of those things while you're using your income to pay your bills, and then putting a little bit back for savings. And then the other thing is, as we empower women Mm -hmm. with education, then they're going to teach their kids and they will teach their kids. And so it's a beautiful generational thing because, you know, then we're empowering other generations, Mm -hmm. you know, learning how to read a credit report. Yeah, that is I wasn't taught that my parents did not give me that. And it's not that they didn't want to. um, It's just they didn't know. Mm -hmm. And so this is not something I grew up with. This is something I had to learn. Mm -hmm by working at a credit union. Yeah. And so I think um, my kids, they they benefit from, you know, my, the education that I gave them. Mm-hmm. And then they'll be able to pass that on to their kids. So I think it, it's generational. And I think that's a beautiful thing, too. That is so beautiful. You know, we talk about, you know, setting yourself up for a healthy future here. Mm-hmm. You know, we help empower women by counseling them through their decisions yes. and say, you know, like, you know, what do you want your life to look like mm-hmm. a year from now, five years from now? Yeah. Like how do we work towards towards those goals together? And I think that is such a beautiful piece of it. Like mm-hmm. you said, like when you're creating these healthy financial habits, you're not just doing it for you right. or even for your child right now. Like they're going to benefit over the long mm-hmm. term and eventually turn around and whether that's through their own children right. or through friends or family, be able to give that what you gave them plus some to other right, people. Exactly. So the benefits of, you know, doing these, putting that $5 mm-hmm. aside every month. I think many of us, if, you know, like it is a privilege, but many mm-hmm. of us won't miss that $5. Exactly. And so that is just a wonderful piece of advice. Mm-hmm. Like put it in a separate account. Yeah. Just don't touch it. Pretend it's not there. I think that's awesome. Yeah. And do you recommend using credit cards? I know there's benefits and how can women leverage those benefits to help them? That is, um, <laughs> it, 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 yes, <laughs> I, I do. So the, the answer would be yes, if you know what you're getting into. Yes. So there are huge advantages to mm-hmm. having credit cards. Um, I actually help people build their credit score with credit cards because capacity is a big part of making up that credit score. However, what I would... Um, The danger of that is you only want, so if you have a thousand dollar limit, you only want to use 30% of that. Yeah. So when you start using, uh, you know, a little bit over than 30% of the capacity, so Mm -hmm. the limit on the credit card, it's going to start having the opposite effect. Yeah. And it's going to lower your credit score. And then if you go over the limit, a lot of cards have over the limit fees. Okay. And then that's just going to balloon. And then a lot of times if you're over the limit, then they'll also um, make 
make you pay a default rate. Mm -hmm. And so it's not the rate that you signed up for. And so I think if you know how to responsibly use credit cards, I think they're fantastic. However, if you, you can't, um, I guess if you can't balance that and you can't understand how it, important it is of keeping that capacity low, um, then I would discourage it yeah. until you know you're in a financial position to where you could do that. Mm-hmm. Uh, another thing is, is it a variable rate card? Yeah. You know, just knowing all the small writing, the yep. small writing gets everyone in trouble. <laughs> yes. So understand and read every single part of that contract and even the small writing and knowing exactly what you're getting yourself into. That's it's extremely important. And it's a really important thing right now because as interest rates have risen, a lot of people didn't even realize that they were paying a variable rate on their credit card until now. I actually told our staff that we should do a, a, a promotion and say, I want you to read the interest rate off your credit card statement because a lot of people just don't realize how much they're paying in interest on a rising rate credit card. Wow. Yeah, that is so important and a timely word for right now as we're experiencing these rising interest rates. But I think what you're kind of saying is know yourself, you know, can you responsibly use this? And there's there's no shame if it's like credit cards are not for me right now. Exactly. But just knowing yourself of will I take the time to read all of this fine print and understand what I'm really getting myself into? And then can I, you know, not mindlessly swipe my card because we've all done it. <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> you know, so. And start small. You yeah. know, there's nothing wrong with that either. Start with a small limit. Yeah. And then as you feel good about that, then you can ask for a limit increase. Yeah. And usually your financial institution, if they see you've handled that limit, well, they're they're going to do that. So. Yeah, that's awesome. And so this is just something I'm curious about. What are some of those benefits that come with a card, uh, like a credit card? I know they're so different across cards, but it is. are there um, just like some that are general? Well, for us, we have cashback options, mm-hmm. um, which I love um, because I just like the cashback. But, yeah. you know, depending on like if you a frequent flyer, then Mm -hmm. you would want to have, you know, um, that particular card because you're going to get miles. And so, um, just knowing that there's nothing for free. Mm -hmm. So if it's got a huge rewards points, then there may be one of the, you know, the small writing that you haven't read. So is there an annual fee for that card? Are Mm -hmm. you paying once a year to have that card? If so, you might want to think, is it still a benefit to you? So they have benefit, I mean, cards that have benefits for all types of different things, yep. but just knowing um, what's the cost of the benefit. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the big thing. And if you're willing to pay that cost, then that's fine. Um, yep. You know, a lot of times if you're paying your cards off before they even um, get interest, then I would definitely get a you know a card yeah. with the type of benefit that's going to, you know, reward my life the most. Yeah. That's wonderful. And it's wonderful that there's that many options of yes. what does your lifestyle look like? Who are you? What do you yeah, enjoy? Exactly. And then getting those benefits from the card mm-hmm. whenever you're able to. And we talked about this a little bit, but adding a new baby to your family always changes things financially. And how can a woman financially prepare for a baby that she wasn't expecting? She just found out that a baby's going to be here in seven months, six months, yeah. five months. Um, what are some of those kind of immediate action steps that she can take? I would say prepare for diapers mm-hmm. and things like that. So go ahead and start looking for those specials. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, a lot of different uh, merchants will do sales and different things yeah. like that. So go ahead and, and try to do that. And the pregnancy network. I yeah. mean, you can take your classes yeah. and get, you know, um, free uh, diapers and things like that. So that's that's wonderful. Mm-hmm. Um, knowing the resources in the community. Again, that's another big thing. Like, yeah. I don't think people explore the resources we have here in Greensboro. Mm-hmm. Um enough to yeah. understand that there's a lot of help out there if you if you're looking for that. So mm-hmm. I think that's huge. Yeah. And just talking to someone about it. I mean, I think that's big is just having that person to talk to. I think we have seven financial counselors at my credit union yeah. that would love to just talk this through with someone and say, you know, let's look at these costs. You know, what do you plan to do? Do you plan to buy formula? If so, you need to prepare for that formula. Are you prepared for the time off? Are you prepared for 
the deductible on your insurance. You know, I, just making sure that you're going through all those different uh, steps to see are you prepared, and if not, how can we find you resources to get you more prepared? And I think that's big um, because then you're going to rest a little bit easier knowing that you went through line by line and looked at all those different items. Yeah, and I love hearing you say that there's seven different financial mm-hmm. counselors at your credit union because. Mm-hmm. That is such wonderful information for people to have of like, okay, there's someone that I can talk to specifically Mm -hmm. about this because even if you have wonderful people in your lives, whether that's friends or church mentors Mm -hmm. or whoever it is, not everyone has the skill set that you would need to be able to say, hey, can you help me look at my budget? (laughs) Can you help me prepare for the upcoming expenses? These are the things that, this is our high fives. This is what we do at our credit union. When we know that we've helped someone reach their goal, Mm -hmm. then we advertise that and we're like, so-and-so got their new car yes. and we were so excited because they worked for it so hard. Yeah. So we've been able to, you know, we do uh, something at our credit union. If it's not now, then how? Yeah. So if you can't get the loan now, here's how. Mm-hmm. And so we give them a path. Yeah. It doesn't look hopeless when someone gives you a path. When yeah. someone says no, you feel very defeated. But mm-hmm. when, when someone says, we can't do it here, but let's, if you get down this road and you fix this and this, then we can do it. Yeah. And that's when you give someone hope. You're giving them a goal. And yeah. so you're, it's almost like I haven't done it yet. Yes. Yet it's that space of it's going to happen, yeah. just not now. And um, so that's where we get really happy because mm-hmm. we're able to, you know, for that person to get their new car yeah. or their house, yeah. you know, a house they've been saving for for a long time. And that's what makes us excited. I mean, we love that. So yeah. one of the things that we get to say in our staff meetings is we get to help change people's story, mm-hmm. you know. At the Pregnancy Network, you guys help change people's story. Yeah. And I just think that's just wonderful. I mean, we love doing it, and really that's why we exist. Yeah. That is really cool. I loved when you said, if not now, then how? Mm-hmm. And I think that is such a freeing mindset. It is. You know, you're talking about taking away some of the shame of like, it's okay if you don't know how to read a credit report or it's okay if, you know, your value, like your value is not attached to the number in your bank account. Um, But I think it's also freeing to just know like, that is like how money, I heard someone say like, if you have to save up for something, like that's how money works for most people, you know, like very, (laughs) very few people are just, you know, able to meet all their goals as soon as they think of it. Exactly. Um, So I think that that is freeing too Mm -hmm. of if you just found out you're pregnant and you don't have all the financial resources that maybe you hoped you would or thought you would at this point in your life, you are not alone. No, you know, absolutely not. Setting up that fund mm-hmm. for diapers, for formula, that is so normal. And it, it is. takes time to build those things absolutely. up. Absolutely. Yeah. So what resources are available to women to learn about finances? I know we talked a little bit about this, that there's some books and I'll absolutely leave those in the show notes, anything okay. that you send over. Yeah. But are, are there any that come to the top of your mind? Um, we actually have a financial wellness center on our website. Okay, that's You don't awesome. even have to be a member. You literally just go on to, you know, www.acclaimfcu.org, mm-hmm. and we have a financial wellness center. What you can do is it, it will walk you through every subject. So awesome. how much do I need to save before having a baby mm-hmm. or – how to budget or um, what if I want to buy a car. It's all these different scenarios that you can take these courses and it's self-taught. And um, sometimes people don't always want to talk to someone. They want to kind of dive in themselves first. And it's just a great opportunity to be able to do that. Um, And it's not just a claim. I'm sure other online resources have those things. And so I would suggest doing something like that. But I don't think there's anything more than just to face-to-face yeah, and just connect with someone that you trust Mm -hmm. and talk this through, you know, just making sure that you have that person that you trust that you can talk through at your financial institution, I think is really important. Yeah, that is wonderful. And even hearing that that online resource is available for anyone regardless of membership status maybe do that work through some of those things and then go see your person and Mm -hmm. maybe you walk in feeling a little more prepared of like okay i mapped this out Mm -hmm. i figured out that this is how much i kind of want to save have saved before baby gets here can you help me you know exactly having that in your back pocket makes you feel maybe Mm -hmm. a little more empowered and a little more 
prepared. Well, and just like this podcast is going to empower someone, there mm-hmm. are there are tons of financial um, podcasts that you can listen to yep. as well um, that will give you information about savings and different things like that. So, I mean, any avenue that you can find, I, yeah. I would definitely explore those just to see if you, again, we're going back to that knowledge, yep. um, just to give you a little bit more knowledge on these subjects and empower you to feel better and less stressed. Yep. That is awesome. So it has been so wonderful talking to you today, and I've really enjoyed getting to hear all of your wisdom. And this is a question I like to ask all of the people who we have on our podcast, but what is your why for serving people in the capacity that you do? You know, our why is always going to be just like I told you, it's it's that high five moment. It is when we get to watch people um, come in and say, this is what I want. And we Mm -hmm. show them the path to get there and they get it. Yeah. That is why we do what we do. Um, We want to empower everyone. Yeah. Um, We... You know, it's 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 funny. Um, we love to. That's where we get our joy. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's not the documents or the income statements or yeah. the balance sheet. It's it's when we get to change lives. Yeah, and it's not us that's changing the lives. It's the member that does the work. Yeah, all we do is give them the plan. Yeah, and so you know, if they follow the plan, they're actually doing the work, and yeah. they deserve the high five. But it's just really fun for us to see that happen. Um, yeah. Another thing that I love to do in my why would be to give back to the community. Yeah. It's just a big part. We love Greensboro. We love our area and mm-hmm. we just love giving back. Yeah. And, you know, that will always be our why is to make sure that we're empowering our members in our community to the best of our ability. Yeah. And it's extremely rewarding. And it's why I love credit unions. Yeah. That is so beautiful. And I love that you said, you know, it's not us that's doing it. It's mm-hmm. us getting to be that guide that's or right. give our members that plan and then share the wealth with the community and give back. And um, that is just really beautiful getting to be a part of people's stories in that way and make a positive impact on others' lives. Yeah. All right. Well, Christia has been so nice having you on today. Thank you for inviting me. Of course. And we are so excited to share this with our listeners and I know it'll be so helpful. Oh, thank you so much.